Hey, this is Mike. Hey, this is Kaz, and you're listening and watching Two Broke Watch Knobs. We have made it all the way to episode 277. Michael, hello. Hello. Every time I see you, I, I, I really think that I need to um, upgrade my background game because it, it still <laughs> looks like I'm in uh, some kind of patient room with like the cheap curtain in the back. Oh, and... that's funny. So like they so like the orderlies can't see you. Yeah. You cover them you cover the window for privacy, for privacy. Just, just like really kind of stale colored <laughs> walls and uh Craigslist couch behind me, you know. Is I gotta... there anything is there anything preventing you from doing like from changing that area? Just just the motivation um mm, battling hardest thing of all battling some depression day to day, you know, mm -hmm. just the will to, to do that. I immediately, I think maybe I'll hang some guitars, but is that weird? Are we going to look like a gear YouTube or something? But I, I think know. we're past the point of really worrying about what we look like. Yeah. I'm I wearing a he... homemade M and M shirt that my wife made for me, my son and myself where he was a mini M and M and we were two regular M and M's. <laughs> I think, I think we're way past the point of caring about what we look like. <laughs> it looks really good. I thought it was an official M&M's shirt. Nope. My wife made it. My wife also made the first Two Book Wash Knob shirt, yep. if you recall, which I almost did wear today as well. So. To the to the candy company, please do not initiate a DMCA takedown because of the M&M shirt. Uh, please don't. Uh, I made this. I know. I mean, I mean, like, not, not I. My wife made it. I, I washed her do it. I washed her make it. I'm sure we'll be fine. Thanks for listening to the episode, guys <laughs> and gals. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a pretty fun freeform topic. Uh, yep. A lot of times, you know, I think I feel grateful that a lot of folks find us at the start of their watch collecting journey. And it's a very tender time uh, when you're starting out because you start to you start to see all this stuff on Instagram. You you probably end up feeling that you need this watch or that watch or to have this experience, the, the red bar experience or the meetup experience or um, check off these boxes to enter some kind of secret watch society or, or be accepted uh, in the hobby overall. And so Kaz came up with a great idea today about discussing uh, something he called the secret watch society. And uh, the the idea here is that there really isn't one. And this ties back to a classic TBWS theme about collecting in a vacuum. And so I'm I'm glad that we're exploring oh, yeah. this today. And it's it's uh it feels very, very bread and butter for us. And I always like these types of episodes. Hell yeah. That's gonna yeah. be a good one. Yeah, there is there is no secret watch society. You actually said an amazing phrase, which I think encapsulated perfectly. And then I promise we'll get on with the show. Um, be accepted. Yeah. You should never feel like you have to make a purchasing decision to be accepted by other collectors in whatever community, whether yeah. it's comic books or guitars or, or 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 whatever. We'll talk more on that, but I think that's that that's that's an amazing way of phrasing it. So hell yeah. But but first you want to honor tradition for the 277th time do you want to do a wrist check with me yeah i'm trying to figure out okay yeah there's still a clock yeah we're still getting used to riverside okay so i see the episode is still recording thank goodness for that yeah i can see it i can see it on there and if it weren't recording we're just two cool dudes talking <laughs> about our wrists right yeah what do you uh <clears throat> what do you have on today i'm wearing my manta green dial ah Try to get off my wrist. There you go. Thank you. I'm wearing my Monta Triumph. Michael has it on the screen as well. This is the limited edition green dial. I still love this watch. I went through a series of just cycling through and wearing a whole lot of like watches that are that are left in my collection right now. And I've gotten to this one. I was wearing the Christmas Chrono for a while, and then before that, I was wearing the um, my Grand Seiko because I got it back. And this is just this is just an all around fantastic watch. I think it's one of those things where can you scroll up to the to the to, to the metrics or to the metrics? God damn it, fucking work to the dimensions. Let's see, <laughs> thirty. Oh yeah, here we go. 
38.5 millimeters in diameter, 9.7 millimeters thick, 47 lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width. Those for me in a watch are perfect. It's Damn funny. You're perfect. You're, you're really a, a thickness snob. I don't know if that's, that's the best way to say it, but you yeah, know, I'll, I'll share dimensions uh, of a watch with you sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, it's only like, it's only 11 or 12 millimeters thick. It's great. And you're just like, oh, okay, whatever, Mike. <laughs> what, I'm sorry, Mr. Schwarzenegger. I didn't realize we were wearing hockey pucks this time of the year. Um, <laughs> hashtag girth snob. You can do with that hashtag whatever you want, honestly. <laughs> that might, be, no, a, that might so, be a dirty subreddit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and I just became the moderators of hashtag girth snob. But um but no for me the the I'm <clears throat> I'm very sensitive to like certain sensations and things like that. And one that I'm always aware of is things on my like body. So like I can't wear like I ha- my clothing has to be a little looser because I just feel weird if it's tight. Like um I have to wear shoes a certain way, otherwise I'm just constantly thinking about it. And the watch the, the watch piece kind of fits into that because if the watch is too top heavy or if it's just, if I feel like it's protruding too much off my wrist, uh, I can't stop thinking about it. And it, it annoys me. Uh, it, it, it just, it, it just feels like the watch is constantly trying to pull away from my body. So really my sweet spot has become this 10 millimeter and under uh, area for, for, for thickness. And, the fact that the Triumph does that and it's an automatic and it's clearly just fucking gorgeous. Um, that's a win for me. Yeah. Same thing with how um, you wear your watches pretty tight, probably because you don't like them moving around. I hate when they move and they like sag on my, when they, and they sag on my, I'm blocking the microphone. I hate when they move and they sag on my wrist because it just, it, it feels like I have an article of clothing that's just about to fall off, but not quite falling off. And you just want to rip it off. It's like, fucking get it, just get off me. You know what, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I always like a little bit of loosey-goosey on, on the, the bracelet watches. There, there's it's... I probably talked about him before, but I, I grew up a friend of the family. He's a neurosurgeon. And I, I remember, because I, I saw him not too long ago, he had some kind of citizen watch. And he just, nice. it looks like the guy, he bought it and just didn't size it. So it just has all of the all of the bracelet. You just like um, I'm going to put it on. That's that's just the watch. So it's just moving around constantly. Related segue, and then I would love to get to your wrist check. Can I tell a short story? Yeah, please do. Do you remember that rainbow Invicta? Yeah, how that can I, I had? forget? I saw it in the wild. You saw a just a serious person, a real person that seemingly purchased this. I saw a living, breathing, what I would assume was a sentient human being at a hotel check-in line in front of me. I'm very upset because the, like the room wasn't ready at the same time as the pool. And he like, it was really complicated, but I just kept looking at his wrist because he was wearing the watch and the same thing. I thought, oh, he just didn't size it because it was like, in the middle of his hand, like it was just falling down the middle. And then I remembered, oh no, that's just how that watch wears. Yeah. Cause so I he... took off every link I could from that watch. And I did the, the class micro adjustment as tight as I could. And it still looked like, like the, the shirt sleeve of like a, a sweater. Like it was just he... falling down. My you said he was, you I said might he was also upset? just have tiny hands. You, you said he was upset. upset. Yeah. That's, that seems like the perfect watch yeah. to, uh, to wear if you want to make a hotel to be to be uh, mad in <laughs> a hotel customer service attendant cry uh it's the perfect watch for that <laughs> so maybe that's my short segue that's my short segue um is my audio cutting in and out for you or am i lagging no not at all okay cool making sure your video is kind of hazy for me so it might oh. just be me well my my laptop sounds like it's gonna fly off the table so <laughs> we'll keep rolling with it i'm sure it'll be fine but yeah, that's that's that that's my that's my Rainbow Invicta loose fitting watch story. That's my that's my Monte Triumph um, wrist check. I fucking love this watch. Heck yeah, it's my favorite watch of yours that I saw recently. I have to admit. Yes, 
That and the Christmas Chrono impressed me. Christmas Chrono is where it's at. I have it. You're going to get a double wrist check. I have it right here. Boom. Classic. Come on now. <laughs> Classic. What do you um, got? I'm excited for yours. I, I, I already know what you're wearing. Yeah, so today uh, today my wrist check is brought to us by kindly by Olic and Vice, which is a, a brand that um, I don't know why. I, I, I took an interest in their designs a couple of years ago, and I felt like I was screaming into the void just... You know, I, I would see their their releases and I would write about them on the website. And they're just really cool brand uh, that makes just pretty impressive, specifically aviation inspired pieces. Uh, and today I'm wearing what's called, let's see, it's a uh, it's a fun little fun little piece. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share the screen. Um, so what we have here is the, all right, the Olic and Vice M-52BAF. Now, that's uh, kind of a mouthful, um, mm. but this watch is kind of cool. I, um, I'm i glad I have the chance to, to take a look because I'm, I guess you could call me a pilot watch guy. Uh, I, I like yes. all things aviation, and, and this brand has a ton of, <laughs> They're uniquely positioned in the sense that they have so many um, vintage models in their archives. But if you go, if you go onto their their Instagram, you know they'll post these renders of something really cool. The Early Bird is is a watch that people really love. It's kind of a, a Pepsi bezel dual time pilot watch that they made a while back. But it seems like the whoever is managing this brand right now is mm -hmm. more interested in inspiring themselves by older designs, but releasing things that are not necessarily a one-to-one -one copy. And so that's what we have here today. So this watch is inspired and I'm going to, I'm going to switch, you know, I got to get a different monitor for this. So um, switching tabs is easier. So the watch mm -hmm. that we have here, is just called the U.S. Air Force Watch. This is nice. this is on their site, the archives page, and this was a watch that was um, made for the Air Force back in the Vietnam days. And it's you can see that it has a dual time bezel. I I would have preferred that on the the sort of reissue that I'm wearing now, just because it I, I like that functionality way more. But um, it's cool. This this watch paid tribute to the KC-135 Strato Tanker. And if you're uh, an aviation geek, that's that's kind of a, a re mid-air refueling station. Um, and, you know, they, they refueled these uh, these B-52 bombers mid-air. And those are some those are some old birds that are still flying. And so I'm, I'm not like a planeologist. So that but like that's the thing where I see like in on screens or whatever where if a plane's in mid-flight another plane will come and like actually refuel it while they're flying yeah it's very sexual you have this kind of penetration at the nose <laughs> i mean and sure it's sexual it's also it's pretty badass i mean that's like it is talk it about is. efficiency yeah and the theoretically you can keep a b-52 flying um like forever you know with with that method wow. so that's why i think i could be mistaken but i think they're part of our nuclear triad but um mm. So this this watch, um, let me get back to the the page on this. this Are you wearing piece. it now? Because I haven't. I still I still haven't even seen it on your wrist. I am wearing it now, and I'll hold it up. It actually, can you see it now? Yep. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So a really schnazzy skin diver type case, and um, I think they use this case for a lot of their watches. Uh, it's let's go through some of the dimensions here. So it's 39.5 millimeter diameter, 12.5 thick. I think that's mostly because of the crystal. The crystal is very, probably the crystal and the bezel. Yeah. Very bubbly and 47.5 lug to lug with a Soprod P024 automatic. Now this version doesn't have the strato tanker on there. This is actually the B52. Somebody spotted that when I posted this on Instagram. Oh. And I, 
I just I think that's kind of cool. Another thing that I love about this watch, and this isn't saying anything about their branding because I love I love the All I Can Buy logo, but there's no logo. Um, there's no. I brand was going to say logo. when you said that I was starting to look for it. I don't see anything. It's just a big old airplane, and probably so. This bezel also is friction fit and bidirectional. Again, I understand. I understand the desire to not necessarily copy from your archives, but that friction fit bidirectional bezel really would have been nice with a 12 hour scale. Um, mm. And that really would have been a, a nice, a nice tribute to the, to the older piece. But, you know, this is a different, different airplane. I guess you can call this the, the sister airplane. So maybe this is a chance to turn it into a dive watch. Um, and it can certainly be that it's got the 300 meters water resistance. My favorite, my favorite part about this watch is the strap. It is a very snug fitting single pass, um, nylon strap with just the, uh, the cloth keeper. And it it just really fits to the wrist very, very well. That thickness, you don't really feel it, honestly. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to know if they, if they sell those straps by themselves, because I would totally buy some for, for other <laughs> watches. And, um, I even showed this to my wife. She was like, that's a cool watch. And she wore it for a bit. So it's got nice. the wife, it's got the wife approval. And <laughs> I mean, I can see myself wearing something like this, um, day to day. It's, it's a great watch. That crown also is, is very, is very tactile. It doesn't wobble or anything. Say. It sticks out yeah. quite a bit, but that makes it really satisfying to uh, to mess around with. What else? If I had to change one thing about this watch, it would have to do with legibility. So I do find that those wings, those wings... I can sometimes get confused. I don't know if they're a hand telling me the time or something mm. else. So, Oh, you're 100% right. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I think I've seen some older models uh, with a red airplane. I could be wrong, but making the, the plane image they had in the archive color. was interesting. The plane was larger, so it was, large, it was more white space. And the hands, I think, were black. Uh, possibly. Let's take a look. Because that, that would actually be really cool for legibility, if I saw correctly. Oh, look, share this tab instead. Oh, I'm so dumb. Yeah, see, yeah. the hands are black, and the plane's slightly larger. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so it looks like also the loom plots aren't the entire length of the, the hands. Mm. So that probably helps out, too. So... Beautiful watches either way. I, I wish they could have uh, kept a little bit of the branding just like you see here, but mm. still, uh, still a fun piece, you know, uh, this one, let's see, stop sharing. So this, this watch here, um, I think it wears pretty well. I was going to uh, say, re- actually, this, this looks pretty solid. Yeah. It retails us for a little bit over $1,400 and mm. it's, uh, yeah, it's available now. Um, I'm going to get some photos on the site, probably make a YouTube video about it. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're into the history of that older piece or, um, just like the B 52, I've never been a B 52 man myself, but, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a fun watch to, to have. So is it, so is this the first all advice you've had? Cause I, cause I, I remember, I remember when the, when the, the when the, the resurgence occurred and we were talking about it and you were telling me like, Oh, there's this brand, all good advice, all good advice. Um, but from that point to now, I was trying to remember, I'm like, have you handled another all good advice before? Or is this the first one? This is the first time. And I was, I was skeptical, honestly. I, I wasn't sure. Um, it's a very in the weeds brand, mm-hmm. probably even more so than something like CWC. So, mm. um, this is the first time I handle one. The build quality is way better than I thought it was going to be. So that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, I was going to ask like general questions about the experience of the watch. So okay, that's cool. Yeah, it does not feel like a cheap, you know, kind of half baked 
watch design or anything like that. So um, really impressed with the build quality. I think I do, I do hope that one day they at least try the, the one-to-one vintage recreation, especially if they do something with that early bird, uh, people will just freak out, man. Uh, yeah. It, not, not unlike what momentum just did with the, uh, chrono sport UDT that just came out for like, I think 250 bucks pre-order. Um, wow. so, um, yeah, fantastic piece. Thank you for sending it over. Um, I would highly recommend it again, if you're, if you're into that style, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to see new releases from them, especially now after experiencing the quality hands-on because it's, you know, it's great. I, I, uh, it's just that, um, yeah, I'd love the 12 hour bezel because I just, I don't know. I like that on fingers, on fingers crossed for the one, one yeah recreation yeah right oh and I, and I think that early bird had a 24 hour uh readout kind of like the glycine airman that i love so oh, cool heck yeah maybe, maybe guys think about we'll it see. think, think about, about it. it call us <laughs> call us <laughs> thank, thank you so much all advice that's huge yeah um solid wrist check Let's do this. This is so. If you've been listening to the show for a while, or if you're kind of hopping in and out, this is generally the portion of the episode where we would go through um, housekeeping topics. We've decided to streamline our episodes and refocus on just kind of keeping it on topic and doing risk checks. If you're interested in the idea of um, housekeeping, or, or for us just talking about things that are new on the website and new projects we have in the works, I would encourage you instead to go and subscribe to our newsletter. Um, our newsletter, you can access it. If you go to the homepage and uh, scroll down on the homepage, you'll see there, it's a it's like a, a, a big a black container and it'll say, to a newsletter, and you put your email in there. Um, or similarly, if you just go on the website and go onto any posts, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll also see it there. Um, subscribe to the newsletter there. I think I can also include a link in the YouTube description here that'll just take you to a dedicated sign-up page for the newsletter. I'll do that as well. So um, I would just encourage folks to do that. We're going to be launching the first iteration of the newsletter soon. Thank you so much to the people who have um, gone and subscribed already. We have a ton of people. Um, we, I really wish we started doing the newsletter earlier. Yeah. Honestly, with the amount of interest that they've had, what's so funny is like, I'm so I, I, I work in the internet for my day job and I'm so jaded. I'm so jaded to everything on the internet, but over the past like two months, we had, we've literally had people email us and write to us on Instagram and say, Hey, do you guys have a newsletter? Or like, Hey, can I subscribe anywhere for updates? My first thought was who the fuck would want to subscribe? To, I don't subscribe to newsletters. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I, I think I think you and I we um, we're not normal. We've spent enough time uh, working in digital marketing and getting newsletters together for other people, and probably the at least the whole time I I work on on them, I'm just like this is stupid. Like I hate this. I don't want to do why, this. <laughs> why would Why would I want to make one? But. Um, but for two more wash jobs, I, I, I have to disassociate like our day jobs from the, the reality that I, I do, I do truly believe like, yeah, we're a watch website, we're a watch podcast, everything like that. But at the end of the day, I do feel that we have a strong entertainment factor to what we do. And I like entertaining people and some people like being entertained enough to the point where they're just like, Hey, I'd like to be up to date on when you guys post new stuff. So cool. Yeah. I mean, well, Bob, that that's, um, this is an amazingly long way of saying, Check out the newsletter. Or subscribe to it, rather. The first iteration is going to be going out um, soon. And the second thing is a huge thank you to everyone that cared enough to ask. And then also a huge thank you to everyone that actually already has signed up now. So the newsletter, um, I'm just going to I'm just going to be doing it once a month, I think, right now. Um, it might increase, but basically the idea is it's going to be a breakdown of things that are new on the website. There's going to be, uh, I'm going to try to have a video component as well, sort of like, 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 you know, it'll be it'll be me with a picture in picture, just talking about the website and things you can ex uh, expect. So, if you wanted to experience the newsletter in just video form and hear about new things, and then go and actually read them on your own, you totally can do that. So, um, it should be a pretty good time. But, but yeah, that would just wanted to give a a, a, a quick shout out to the, to the newsletter. I and was just thinking why there's no yeah. homecoming or housekeeping. I keep keeping housekeeping segment. Sorry. 
So you're gonna you're gonna guide people through the site and show them what's new and stuff in that video. I'm gonna try to. Yeah. Yeah, I like was talking. Reminded, maybe 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 talking head style. I don't know. I was reminded of the uh, Silicon Valley when they they had the little the little um the little pipey. flute. Yeah, Pipey is guiding you through the through the app and stuff. You're just you're just 47 steps away. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I I love that show so much. That show might be my happy space. I got to yeah. I got to go watch it. You did it. I think it's you time for three a re- weeks for me. It's time for a rewatch, you know. So good. Yeah, I that, spent that, 3 years at a tech startup. That show hits hard, man. Yeah, I bet. The show hits real hard. <laughs> yeah, I think the newsletter, I, I like the idea of it being something different. Once a month, I think, is is perfect. Um, you know, if, if you guys uh, can get some inc- exclusive video content out of it, I think that'd be, yeah. that'd be cool. Now, um, we we should also be talking about live streaming a little bit because we'd, we'd give you a... Yes. Yeah, we'd give you a heads up in that newsletter. We're going to be trying to... So now that we've upgraded, I guess in a way, we're still in the process of upgrading our video component, but we're we're trying. Uh, bear with us. We we do want to get into, you know, the streaming because people people just love it. I still haven't gotten my cat ear headphones. I I convinced my wife. I told her, I told her I'm going to do this. I told her it was your idea. Um, That's fine. So that helped. Uh, Getting the cat ear headphones. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's totally I didn't, funny. I didn't, I didn't really do that. <laughs> you can, I don't care. You can say, yeah, I'll, I'll cast it's a great, it's a great idea if we buy Bitcoin right now, like, <laughs> like, like right now, um, completely independent of 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 your sentiments towards it. My wife was talking about getting new headphones, and she said, "I think I want to get cat ear headphones." And I started laughing, and she got self conscious. I'm like, "No, no, no, babe, I'm 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 laughing at Michael. I swear." I'm laughing at Michael. Get the cat ear headphones. You're fine. Yeah, this has been such a this has been <laughs> such a long running joke at this point that now I'm gonna have to do it and I'm gonna hate it. I'm sure. Um, what if you love it? What if you? What if it's everything you've ever wanted in headphones? Like it's just me. I find out that it's my, it's, <laughs> it's my identity. Me. It's it completes who I am. me. It completes <laughs> me. Yeah. Um, funny story. I tried to. I tried to trick my wife yesterday into buying me a watch. Okay. This oh, was, interesting. This was kind of a fun experiment. Uh, she was buying some candles on Amazon. Sure. So we're, we're both logged in on different devices. So as she was shopping for the candles, I, I dumped a citizen into the cart just to be like, oh, I wonder if she'll just like push the button. But then she saw Spile. the candles. Yeah, oh, these candles are $800. <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> so close. So close. Well, then you got to be like, well, yeah, no, that's, that's Tibetan beeswax candles. Yes. Yeah. They're... <laughs> They're really good. I yeah, think. they're just really expensive. They're just really yeah. They're, 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 I, they must be worth it. Yeah. And then the package gets and you're like, oh, they love they left a watch in here. Oh, duh, this is so infuriating. I guess I'll just keep it. Yeah. I guess I'll just keep the watch. I would have gotten so much. I should. You're taking that back to Whole Foods. Returning stuff <laughs> is so so easy. I, yeah, she'd force me to go to Whole Foods with the watch and return which, it. Which which citizen was it? Uh, you know the barnacle one. That got really popular recently. The, the Challenger, Fuji. Challenge Diver, or Challenger, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, Fuji yeah. Bitso or something. The the version that's all titanium and all blacked out. Oh, it's pretty cool. That but it's kind of cool. it's a it's a lot of money. It's it is. I think I think because it's a JDM, you can't really find that many deals on them, unless I'm mm. really bad at shopping for JDM stuff. I I probably am. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's, well, uh, if if Seiya Japan was still active on that website, that'd be a great first place to try. Dude, he, he's just, he's going through his Anthony Bourdain phase. He's just he's traveling he's in the wind. Yeah, good for him, man. You, you love you, entire Seiya Japan team. You love you. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Cool. So but yeah, go check out the newsletter. Yeah, Mike's right. We're gonna um, put together a live stream schedule because we just want to be able to do that for. Fun. I think I think that would be a ton of fun. Um, with that said, you know what's totally funny? I started that segment saying like, "Oh, to streamline the show, not take too much time." I'll tell you very little bit about the newsletter, but the amount of time we spent talking about the newsletter was basically the amount of time we would have spent on housekeeping anyway. It's okay, man. <laughs> two two hundred and seventy seven episodes in. Uh... No one's no one's come and rioted outside our houses yet. 
That's true. Complaining about the length of the show. It's a free show. That's funny. Let's do this. Let's effortlessly glide with grace and humility into the main topic. There are no secret. There is no secret watch society. I think this is a really interesting idea that pervades not just watches. It's a little bit of everything. It's, and we've talked about this in many different versions on the show. And this is like Michael mentioned at the beginning of the show. This is something that I would just love to free talk on um, because it's still, it still exists today. This idea that there are certain patterns of behavior or certain purchases that I need to make for someone to consider me an authentic watch collector, but not so much someone outside of watch collecting, but for people inside of watch collecting. Oh, you need a dive watch. Oh, you need, you, 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 you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And you, you're, you had the example of the summer watch. Oh, well, what's your summer watch? Uh, the, whichever one I grab first. I don't know. You need you need on your Instagram to have the photo of your wrist with a cigar lighting it on the exhaust of the Aventador of your Aventador <laughs> with a with a Richard Mill on 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 wrist. You know, it's still. Can I tell you? I might I might tell the story in the early days. So OG TBWS folk will probably get a kick out of this. Can I tell you a really funny story about um, boobs and watches? Always, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was. So it's Remind one of those me. really funny. It's one of those really funny things where I don't think people like. I didn't totally grasp this. I'm also not like incredibly perceptive. I'm. A, I'm. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm like that dull knife you have in the drawer that you know you need to sharp, but if you press hard enough, it'll cut things. So it's fine. That's basically. Or, or you'll my, cut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll slice your fucking thumb to the bone. Okay, so you can't cut tomatoes, but you'll cut my fucking thumb. Thanks, yeah. Kaz knife. Thanks for fucking <laughs> my shit, Kaz knife. God. Um, when I first started getting into watches, like I was, I was, I was sucked into Instagram. Like, remember just hours and hours of scrolling on Instagram. Both remember of when us, things man. were, f- yeah, when things were yeah. fresh and new, and you didn't know all of the brands, and you weren't jaded to everything around you. I'm also just describing my twenties, but like. There was that point in time in watch collecting and I was going through Instagram and I was scrolling, and I was scrolling and there was, there was a series of photos. There was, it was a, a, I would call it a photo template that I kept seeing that I convinced myself was something. And I'm only saying this to the clarity of time that I convinced myself was something I had to do or that I thought was something that I should do because it was going to be really cool. And it was a guy taking wrist shot at like a dinner date with the significant other, you know, usually it's a woman and it's like photo of the wrist and you see uh, uh, her sitting across from them and you can't see her face, but like, it's at like a dimly lit room and like, Oh, you know, and it's just the captions like, um, you know, date night with the Rolex, uh, 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 a dinner for two in my bright lane or some shit like that. And I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. I got to do that. That's so cool. I got to do that. Um, I didn't I remember I wasn't using these words, but I think it's really interesting how easy it is when you're just learning something to be quote unquote influenced, even if it's inadvertent by other content that you see on Instagram. Like most people that I saw doing that photo probably didn't realize what they were doing. And this is this is just what I this is just talk talk about perceptions. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Um, uh, my wife and I we, we weren't married at the time. We were just hanging out. We were we were out to dinner, and. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. We 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 were we were out to dinner, and uh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do it. It's perfect. I'm wearing a nice watch. I'm gonna take a good photo, and like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, hey, give me a second. I want to take a photo and post it on 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 Instagram. And my wife's like, oh, okay. And she was just she was just sitting there. And so I took a photo, and I thought it looked amazing. I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. This looks so fun. Like, there's mood, there's lighting. And I show it to my wife, and I'm like, babe, look at this picture. Look how look how good it is. She's like, this is a picture of my tits. And I'm like, I knew oh. I love this photo for. for I guess it is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't yeah, think I remember I never, that story. I never really thought about. I guess it is. You know, <laughs> but just talking about perception. I'm here thinking like, oh, it's cool, beautiful lighting. You're at a wonderful dinner with someone you care about. Boom, wrist shot. That's a that's a vibe. That wasn't popular back then. That's like a thing now. But like that was a vibe. My wife's like, yeah. that's just a picture of my tits. I'm like, fuck. I guess I guess you're right. <laughs> And it never went up. <laughs> no, no, God, I didn't. It, it was. It wasn't like garish or anything like that. It was, you know what I mean? It wasn't like because sometimes you see like 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 watch photos out there, and like it's just crude as shit. 
She just happened to be sitting there. But in the context of perception that wasn't my own, perception that wasn't influenced by wanting to be uh, wanting to be putting up cool information on Instagram, she was just like, that's not a wash photo. This is a picture of my tits. I was like, yeah. word. Delete. Thanks for letting I, me know. <laughs> I might have I might have fallen into that a little bit too. Not not the not the boobs part, but I think another <laughs> another uh, sort of calling card to to I guess uh, find yourself in that club is is the whole traveling the traveling photo the jet setting. Oh uh, yeah. Here I, here I am in uh, in Venice today. Here I am in in uh, you know you know in Germany the next day and. Uh, so I, I probably, I probably took a couple of those photos thinking that's, oh, that's, that's a way to get people to think that I'm uh, authoritative in a sense, uh, as a, a kind of, you know, watch content creator. We, we weren't even, we didn't have a lot of momentum at the time, you and I, uh, mm. but I, I, that, that, that probably crossed my mind thinking, oh, this is what people have to see in order to take me seriously as some kind of um, watch content creator or some kind of authority that people might listen to uh, when mm -hmm. they're, when they're weighing out their watch buying decisions. So there, there's a, there's a lot of them, whether it's the, um, you know, the sexy cars or the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the shots, like, like you mentioned, um, I think there's it's toned, also the, I'm oh, sorry. I think it's toned down a little bit. That's just what I was going to say. I think our particular algorithm feed on Instagram has acclimized or acclimated to you and I just not commenting or heart or hearting anything like that. Yeah. I'm fairly yeah. certain that stuff is still out there. Yeah. That's a good you point. You know what I mean? Well, thank God for that. Yeah. What I was going to, uh, what I was going to say also is it's also the, 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 the sickness of, of, social media in that it's not a validated experience unless I can share it on social media. And so that's basically the idea of I'm not really on vacation until I post, you know, a wrist shot from the plane or like I post like uh, uh, espresso in the piazza, beautiful morning in Venice. Like now, yeah. now I'm already like, like it's only validated when I'm able to, to, to post about it or share it. And I think that, that idea of watches, experiences, and social media messes with people's heads in watch collecting. Like you, you OG TV Davis folk will be tired of hearing me say this, but if you, if you, you have to be able to collect watches in a scenario where social media doesn't, doesn't exist. If you could be a watch collector, okay, this is kind of funny because I'm, I'm I'm setting myself up for I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to alley you my own joke. If you could be a watch collector without friends, you're the perfect watch collector. But Kaz, don't watch collectors don't have any friends anyway or not have any friends anyway? No, I guess they don't. <laughs> you don't have real friends. You have internet friends. But if you could be a watch collector and not feel like you have to share photos of your watches with people or be validated by them being impressed or validating a, dis a purchase decision that you made, like if you can or can't do that, I think is very important. Um no, that's not so I can I can I can already hear the argument to that. Some people enjoy sharing aspects of their collection with people. Some people actually enjoy that as part of collecting, like, oh well, I love talking about my collection. I don't know if we're talking about talking about your collection. We're talking about trying to get uh 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 trying to have someone make a judgment about you based on your collection yeah climb climb the proverbial watch collecting totem pole because mm -hmm. of your collection in some way i'll share an example um he's an og tbws listener he helped us on our tbws facebook for a little bit and now i consider him a close personal friend uh most folks will know him as uh, it's either watch srq or watching srq you know who i'm talking about right 100 mm -hmm. percent, that guy is a collector who did not give a fuck what anyone thinks. It's it's kind of it's kind of, he that guy collects. 
<laughs> he collects and he buys collect. things in such a way. He buys things, and I'm always so impressed and amazed by his ability to purchase timepieces without the oh, like it's just a it's just a citizen or like oh, it's just a blah blah blah. Like what? Like he'll like he indiscriminate of any baggage that might be associated with a brand or a model. He will purchase something he thinks is cool and that he likes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? That makes me want to share something kind of ugly. Um, Always. So. Probably probably won't paint me in the best best light, but one one bad habit that I, I had to catch myself in was, um, so in the earlier days of the talking watches stuff, the Hodinkee pieces, mm. I would I would obsessively... I would obsessively follow them whenever they came out and let's say, it, you know, so it would be a celebrity or some kind of person that in my mind is a, you know, a very elevated watch collector. And I would, I would catch myself, you know, seeing the breakdown of their collection, the watches that they had. And obviously in my mind, I'm thinking, Oh, I can't, I can't really buy that. But if I did, I'd be a collector. But since I can't, mm. what I would do is I would almost, I'd make these, these uh, lists and I would categorize them like, oh, this guy has this watch as this piece or, th or this is the, um, this is the, the cool GMT. This is the cool chronograph. This is, you know, whatever. So I would, I would create a framework of a, a cool, like talking watches worthy collection and wow. I would. I would insert my own possibilities within those categories. And it, it's just, oh man, um, really spiraling down this, this idea of uh, having to do something like that to enter some kind of cool watch collecting society. Um, it's a lot of work to have fun. To just yeah, have some fun. Yeah. And it's <laughs> not fun. I think, I think I ended up buying stuff that was, uh, you know, I probably didn't like all that much. Um, mm. you know, for, for the longest time I've, I felt, uh, I felt the need to have this or that, or this, this travel watch. I mean, I just, I just bought a cool travel watch and I think, I think it might be, um, it might be the first time I, I, I accept that I liked something different from what those talking watches pieces are like, Oh, this is, right. this is me. Something that you said recently uh, has stuck with me and I think about it a lot because we were, we were talking about collections and so I, I'm, I, I was probably sharing some, some kind of turmoil. And you said, what about, what about just going back to your original preferences? Like way back when you started, what about just going back? Is it something like, uh, is it something like this watch? Is it something, something earlier that, that you, you know, you, I think you mentioned the Speedmaster. And I tried to, I tried to get back into that state of mind. Oh yeah, there's, there was, there was a point where I just, I just wanted a Speedmaster. You know, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to go back in the mental way back machine to, to, to see if I can pull out do those you, preferences again. Do you, do you, have you seen the movie Hook? Robin Williams, yeah. Dustin Hoffman. That's I was just thinking movie. about that movie this morning. I was I was thinking it's about really the boo good. box. I don't know why. <laughs> oh yeah, I, it's because I I messed up really bad at guitar this morning, and then I I told somebody I need to go in the boo box because I made a boo boo. That's funny. Do, yeah. do you remember the scene where the kids are are searching for Pan in Peter, and they're like touching it, and they're like, and, and, and he like yeah. pulls his face and he goes, Peter, yeah, there you are. That's what you got to do with watch collecting. Yeah, you got to go back. You got to go back to what it was before it got fucked up by all this shit. It's what so am true, I supposed man. to collect? What's cool? Oh, I'm. I hope I impress people at the meetup. Like, you know, you know what that you know what the watch was for me that I convinced myself that I need to figure out some way to get because every collection needs it. This is this, this is this is the amazing reciprocal irony between you and my you and my just different collecting histories and styles. Do you want to know what watch that was? Which watch? Speedmaster. A ton of people told me every collection needs a Speedmaster, and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll need to get a Speed. And like, I remember spending so much time on um, the fucking Lunar Oyster website. 
You remember that guy's website? I mean, it's still around, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because that was a great place to get deals on uh, uh, use uh, Speedmasters at the time. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the situation is anymore, but like, I just remember spending, I dedicated so much time looking and trying to plan out like how much I was going to spend and like what I was going to do. Not because I really wanted, I didn't picture myself wearing it. I just pictured the idea of my collection feeling more appropriate with it because it's the Speedmaster. Yeah. Everyone needs a Speedmaster. I don't you think know? you like that watch all that much. It's okay. It's certainly a watch. And I think it's cool yeah. with like the history of it, but like, I don't, I don't want to own it, but I thought yeah. I had to own it because it was cool. Something can be cool and you can not feel the need to own it. You know what I mean? Oh, ab absolutely. I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Um, Is that what yeah. inspired you to re-get your, not your old, but to re-get another Speedmaster? Yes. Yes. That, that was, that was key in that, in that decision. Um, that watch is so you. I don't say that. I don't talk that way very often. That watch is totally you, man. Yeah, and I I I wear that one a lot now. And a, another mm. good thing that happened with with that one in particular, I think that watch um, solidified a, a price bracket for me. Uh, in that mm. I I don't think I don't think I'd find it appropriate uh, to to ever break that sort of range ever. Uh, I think I, I discovered I'm not a five figure watch kind of guy. And then no matter mm. what, no matter what, uh, you know, financial state I'm in, um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. And so I'm really enjoying that, that watch. And so, yeah, I, I, I want to get back into that state of mind because, you know, like we've been saying so far, a lot of these different uh, theories or ideas that you need to follow a certain path or get certain watches to to feel like you're accepted into this society is just it's it's a bad way to think. Yeah. Um, it's going to have you spending a a ton of money. The I I kind of scored on the summer watch though. I don't know if it is How my summer watch, but. Uh, I think that docs is kind of perfect for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like I'll probably, I'll probably never think about a summer watch. If that is a, a category that people talk about quite often. So the idea of a summer watch is something that you wear during summer. If your summer is like, I don't know, shorts and the beach or something like yeah. that. Is that like basically the idea? Yeah. I'm in Washington. I don't have those types of summers, honestly. <laughs> The water is very <laughs> cold, no matter what time of the year. That's funny. Okay, but yeah, no, it's um, I'm happy you were able to find peace in that uh, in that Speedmaster. That thing, yeah, it's just, I just, it's a cool watch. I just don't, I don't feel the need to own it. I'm glad the price thing is also really interesting. The uh, uh the the five figure thing is. You know, people in watch collecting tend generally tend to view uh, watch collecting levels in terms of price brackets. So, you know, zero to a hundred, um, you know, hundred to five hundred, five hundred thousand, thousand plus, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. With the idea that like you're playing skee ball, like you have to like get the high score, like yeah. you have to strategically like 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 play the game in such a way to get a to get, to get a high score. And so, people end up playing chicken with their wallets when they break from one bracket to the other. I remember. Uh, I remember breaking a thousand bucks for the first time was like, oh, I, I remember, I remember spending 70 bucks. My first watch ever was the little, my little Seiko SNK, which I still have. And I love, um, that thing was like 70 bucks and I felt so irresponsible. Yeah. That's, that's good. a, <laughs> that's a pretty decent trip to Publix back at that time. Yeah. It's groceries. Uh, yeah. Back at that time. Now, if I went to Publix for 70 bucks, I could walk out with like a, bottle cucumber. of water and maybe some tic tacs <laughs> and a cucumber <laughs> i mean just one just one cute like the old cucumber like i'm out of season it's all yeah. fucked up looking that cucumber. not or, not organic um no <laughs> that's i mean that's another one the the first five figure watch wow. yeah why put your kid through college that's how people the idea <laughs> <laughs> you're serious about watch collecting 
incongruent with how much you're willing to put into the game. Because there, there's something else that I would love to talk more about. It's this very polemic idea of watches, finances, and investments. Like the idea of a financial component in watch, almost as if it were uh, a, a, a market influence commodity. Um, you know, Rolex is the obvious example. I paid 500 bucks for this Rolex in 1983, and now I'm selling it for $15,000. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and the, the idea still exists in certain tiers of watches. The idea that this is a, 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 a consumer good, but that is but that's priced is influenced by the, the the market to a point where you can almost view it as as an investment. I think when you get into this idea of your seriousness as a watch collector being measured by the amount you're willing to pay, it's the amount you're willing to invest. Like, oh, look how look how serious this guy is on watches. Like, he's got two hundred thousand dollars in this Pelican case right here. He's got to be serious about watches like that, or he's yeah. just really shitty with money. He, he, I mean, or. Or they don't have kids. I just want to put that out there right now. As someone newly child, they're not cheap. That's very possible. Um, <laughs> just just bad with money. Yeah. <laughs> but like that, that is something I think is, is probably where that comes from. Like you are taken more seriously by how much you're willing to invest in watches. That's why I, I've seen comments on people posting their collections and it'll be... Um, like, like some Seikos that are super special to them. Maybe a couple micro brands and like a Timex thrown in there because it was like their like job interview watch, or they just wanted just like a regular watch to wear. And uh, you'll see comments like Psh, "box Why full of shitters." Yeah, 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 exactly right. Like, 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 bro, like that's just like, why don't you just save up and get the Submariners? Like, because I don't want to spend. Nine or ten thousand bucks on a watch, like, yeah. You can appreciate something without having to feel the need to own it, you know. So, but like, I see comments like that all the time, like like people ragging other people's collections because it's there's nothing in there above five hundred bucks or something like that, you know. Yeah, or you yeah you have all these uh, this X number of five hundred dollar watches. Why didn't you just get this? Well, because I like yeah. variety, you know, and I like them. Yeah. <laughs> So if twelve five hundred but a dollar watches, you could add one Speedmaster and one Submariner. Fucking yeah. watch casual. <laughs> I do think it's a good time to propose um, an actual category uh, that if if you want to get into our society, our secret society, the our secret matters, so, our secret society that we're telling everyone about right now. I do think the one shitter is is required <laughs> if you want to be serious. Only because I got one recently, and I, it's a great shitter. I'll talk about it on another episode. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about, and it is a great shitter. Yeah, that's okay. I totally agree. Yes. I take back everything we've said in this episode. There is <laughs> one There's one way to get into the secret two-book wash off society. You need one yeah. shitter. And I don't mean like, a, oh, it's a $50, you know, uh, 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 peanuts Timex with like the wood with Woodstock on it. No, that's fucking awesome. That's not a shitter. Fuck you that's for a, thinking that's, that's a shitter. <laughs> it's a great watch. All right. Yeah. I mean, like if I still had that Rainbow Invicta or whatever, mm. great shitter. Textbook. Hall of Hall of Fame shitter status. Episode episode two seventy eight shitter apologetics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm so inspired. I need a shitter watch now. <laughs> I'm sorry for probably think... making you spend 30 bucks after this or something. Uh, no, don't be sorry. I mean, I might, I might make a brash, a rash. Is it brash or rash? I think rash works. Rash. I'll make a, I'm about to, I'm about to make a rash Amazon prime day decision. Oh, it's coming up two days. It's right? coming up. Yep. The yeah. time of this recording, it is two days from now. Gird your loins. It's getting real. Maybe, maybe you can live stream it. <laughs> if I could figure out how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just, see. Just, maybe just time... like the cheapest box wine you can find. Sit down. <laughs> kind of like. I, I That episode 
of South Park episode where Kyle's dad is the troll. He just like closes all the blinds and stuff and he pours the <laughs> wine. He's just like smelling it. He just like trolls online. <laughs> so I picture you doing buying your shitter. Set the mood by my yeah. shitter. We might be yeah. talking we might be talking shitters in the next episode. I'm pumped. Right. <laughs> that is I am pumped. that is the one that is the one rule of the secret two broke watch knobs watch society. You need one shitter. Yeah. Like swinging put- for the fences shitter. I posted it on the Instagram. It's pretty funny. And I also posted it with the hashtag Saturday shitter. And I might want to, I might want to make that our next Seiko Catterday. So done. If you guys want to participate in hashtag Saturday shitter, I, I post I your shitters stuff. Yeah, on Instagram. Hashtag Saturday <laughs> shitter. Throw the two book wash knobs hashtag in there as well. Michael, yeah. great call back to Seiko Catter Day. I should probably try to bring that back again. Classic, dude. You still have it's cats? I think you have two of them. <laughs> I have two cats. I have two Seikos, although they wouldn't like me to say that because Seiko and Grand Seiko are different now. Did you know that? They pretend like they don't exist to each other. Grand Kitty, Grand... There's, there's a different hash. No, it's got to be the same hash. I'm going to call them both Seikos until someone at Grand Seiko tells me to stop. Yeah, it'll it'll work, I'm sure. <laughs> um But yeah, what else? I think that's a lot of the big ones, price, categories, experiences. Um I think another experience is the um <clears throat> the watch meetup people. I know oh, I was yeah. I was I was really nervous when I went to my first one. There was a really kind dude that came out here and took me to a watch meetup that I had no business being at. We're talking about <laughs> longas and a bunch of other stuff that I'll, Look, I'll never You can't own. think like that. You can't think you had no business being there because of the status that everyone's watches applied to them. Fuck those That's nerds. True. You're cool at all I, those people. I'd rather hang I, out with you on Saturday. I just fell into the secret society uh, you yeah. know, mentality. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think I think that one is is really at its core pretty kind hearted. I think the meetups at the very least are welcoming. I, I haven't I haven't really heard any horror stories. Maybe I'm just really sheltered in this in this hobby, but yeah. The sex pile. All, every, every I would I would I would it's only watches. ever We're sex talking pile. about watches, not people. Oh yeah, to be to be to be perfectly clear, yes. The idea of a sex pile at watch meetup is that everyone takes their watches and puts them in a pile. And then they take a photograph of them and they post them on the internet for other watch collectors to masturbate to. Yeah. Or whatever, or whatever. I'm not entirely sure what sort of enjoyment people get out of the the watch sex pile because I think it's weird. Yeah. I personally if, think the the watch thing is like that is weird. If we did a meetup, it would be people. It wouldn't be watches. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's ever gonna come to an event that we do. <laughs> no, no one's ever gonna hang out with us, dude. Damn it. Oh, that's fine. Um Let's do this. We can start rounding it out, but I would love to end on on uh, on on this note. If you are new to watch collecting, which I know a lot of people are um, that are just getting into the show, uh, for what it's worth, we think you're enough, right, Mike? We think you are absolutely enough. We do. You don't have to prove anything with your watches. If you want to be the watch collector that has every single Timex Peanuts collection, that's awesome. That's amazing. You'll only spend 600 bucks and you'll have achieved watch collecting Nirvana. That's amazing. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and I'd be jealous of you. I'd be I'm, super jealous. I'm still mental Man. when it comes to looking at watches and thinking about what to buy. So <laughs> you would be a very envied watch collector, almost as much as the, the one watch person. Oh, uh, the mythical one watch person. The yeah. unicorn, if mm-hmm. you will. They're yeah. out there. You know what's funny? One watch people are out there, and you know what's even funnier? They're not watch people. It's true. They're funny they people with just one watch. They don't know about this show. They don't know about <laughs> they don't know about Hodinky. Uh they don't know about movements plus day, bliss. plus minus seconds per day. Absolute bliss. Sapphire crystal versus mineral crystal. <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. This, you, this was this was fun. I, I I like these uh these quick and dirty episodes. Um, anytime we do this, it's because we were 
woefully unprepared, but I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope folks, folks will like this one. I think by now, 277, 277 episodes in, most people know we're unprepared for most episodes, but that's okay. Yeah. As long as everyone has fun, that's all that matters. But let's do this. Um, this has been an amazing conversation, an amazing topic. Let us know your thoughts. We've talked about this in different forms. I'm always going to keep talking about this because it's a message that bears constant repeating. You're enough. You don't have to prove anything with your collection. Collect the way you love. And if you feel like you are having difficulty collecting the way you love, stop going on social media. Yeah. Even if you include this show, social media, which I don't, I don't know if we are. I mean, maybe we are, but either way, um, don't be influenced by content that you're uh, 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 absorbing. You know, if you have to think clearly, disassociate for a little bit uh, and then come back to it and see what you can think of. But with that said, let us know your thoughts on this week's episode. Let us know in the YouTube comments. A huge thank you to everyone that has been coming to, commenting on YouTube. Michael and I are in the process of responding to um, everyone's uh, comments now. Also, at the same time, if you liked this episode or if you just like you know, what we're doing at Two Broke Wash Knobs, whether it's the YouTube channel or whether it's on the website, twobrokewashknobs.com, please totally sh uh, share it, spread the word, especially if you're like in a forum or if you're on Reddit and someone's like, oh, does anyone have any good $500 watch recommendations? If you know there's a piece on our website that talks about that and you actually like it, please share it. That actually helps us out a ton. You also help out someone else um, in terms of making a, a proper purchase decision for them. And you get to do a good deed for two people that day. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So spread the word, spread the love. Appreciate everyone. Um, let us know your thoughts. Let us know if there's any other traps that you've fallen into for watch collecting. Uh, this is a safe else. space. I shared this some, is a, this, some dirty laundry. Yeah. 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 I shared that. I took a photo of my wife's boobs <laughs> at dinner. I didn't even realize I didn't even realize, Michael. <laughs> no, this is a great photo. Why do I like this so much? <laughs> I'm like, this is a like, oh, it's so good. I show my wife. She's like, this is just a picture of my tits. I'm like, no, oh, uh, this is. I art. guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm an artiste. God damn it! All right, I'm I'm oh, an artiste man. watch collector, babe. Yeah, man, that was a good Too outro. Far. You nailed that. <laughs> All the subscribing and the sharing, and you're basically Mr. Beast. Don't say that. Don't put that on me. <laughs> I think they just came out with like a Mr. Beast Zaxby combo. You know Zaxby's? It's like a fast food chain. Okay, that's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to sound stupid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know? I guess you wouldn't have. I guess, it might be. It might be just a thing in the South here. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. If you know about Zaxby's, let us know in the comments. Also, that would just be helpful for us to just gauge, uh, you know, where everyone's at in terms of their Zaxbyology but let's do this without any further ado nor gilding of the lily i think it is time to close out the show i'm gonna go and hang out with my family see my baby see my wife with that michael is it that time is it that sad time it's that time thank you for all i can advise for sponsoring my wrist check pretty cool piece uh, i'm gonna enjoy it for a bit and uh as always thank you all for listening my name is mike and this is Kaz. You have been listening to Two Book Watch Knobs. Later.